all my friends. Welcome back to the Micromother Workshop. So today there was again some struggle to set the stream up. As I told you in the last couple of attempts episodes, um, I was using a service called Sharelink to put the video in and then it comes out at YouTube and at Facebook. Now with, with Facebook, it didn't really work that well. Mark didn't reply and also Sharelink didn't reply. So I just couldn't get it to, um, to stream to Facebook groups anymore. And this morning, it also couldn't stream to YouTube anymore. So the only place it could stream to is my Facebook page. And well, as everyone knows who's running a Facebook page, Unless you're constantly throwing coins in, no one's going to see it. So um, this morning I've switched it back to single stream mode, streaming just to YouTube. So sorry, all you guys who've been relying on a Facebook notification, you know, speak to Mark about it. This is now streaming directly to Facebook. And um, this also meant I could increase the frame rate back or the bitrate back to five megabits per second. Um, I'm curious to see what Pedro says um, today about the quality. And um, yeah, I know it's been kind of a funny back and forth between us, but yeah, really Pedro, I appreciate all your feedback, especially on the live streams. So yesterday thinking about what I should do today, I came up with the plan to turn this format here into a podcast to make it easier for people to subscribe. Now, I don't know exactly how this is going to work out yet, but in order to prepare for that, I'm currently recording this session in um, uncompressed quality so I can make afterwards out of it whatever I want to, um, onto, onto disk, and then I'll figure out a podcast, ideally a video podcast distribution service where I can upload that thing. So if you have any suggestions how to do this, where you would like to subscribe, um, where your other podcasts reside, I'll, I'll try to do that. And um, in order to provide some um, new content every day on this channel, um, I made up a topic today, which comes out of my Micromotor University which is a little email trail that you can subscribe to if you want to learn about microquads, either if you are new to the hobby or if you want to have some ammunition information that you can pass on to your friends who are coming new into this hobby. If you want to subscribe to those emails, you can Google Micromotor University. You come to my website where it has an application, you put your email in, and then you get emails over a couple of days. So the goal is to reiterate and um, enhance the content of those emails. So what I do in the second half of um, today's session, I will read and talk about the first content email that I'm sending out to the Micromotor University subscribers, which is talking about 2.4 gigahertz RC transmitters that I've, that's why I've put my most frequently used um, 2.4 gigahertz transmitters here on the table. So if you have any questions on those, or if you've already um, read the first university email, then um, you can start asking those in the Discord chat or in the YouTube chat. Uh, I haven't opened it yet, but as someone pointed out, Discord also has a web app. So later on, I'll be looking into the YouTube chat and into the Discord chat to um, pick up your feedback. So having this out of the way, I want to talk a little bit about um, hovercrafts, how to glue them, and about some special blast from the past that I've received yesterday. So I'm currently figuring out what's the best way to glue these hovercraft kits together. 
If you haven't heard about these yet, they are an awesome way to transform your old microquad electronics. If you, if you have a, cra a crashed microquad that you don't want to repair, making a hovercraft out of this is a great idea. It's um, a really cool toy to play indoors when you can't go fly outside. Now this one here I have attempted, there was an attempt to glue with silicone, but yeah, let me show you what happens. So in the back here, it's still stuck, but you can just literally rip it off and then the silicone in there just comes off the foam very cleanly. So yeah, this is RTV silicone to make gaskets. It's doing that quite nicely, but it does not stick to the foam. See these all glued with silicone. No good. So um, I have ordered from some random eBay seller some foam glue last week. And um, yesterday, this package here turned up. Hobby King sticker tape around it and on the box it says sender Hextronic Australia but I didn't order anything from Hobby King deliberately for years because you guys have converted to the very dark side in my opinion I used to be a big Hobby King customer I bought so much stuff there back in the days 2013, 2014, lots of batteries and um, building supplies like glue, foam, carbon rods, connectors, wires, all that good stuff. But yeah, since their website is just a nightmare and their shipping costs went through the roof, I stopped buying there. So that's why I was um, mildly infuriated when I received this box yesterday. I opened it up though and out comes the foam glue that I ordered, a lot of it, two tubes, I <laughs> thought they'd be smaller, but yeah, two big tubes, which don't say much on the package, you know, I like that. It says Musilage-L, made in China. It stinks like crazy. It says, you know, all the usual warnings on here. And yeah, in this case, I think it's really important to not breathe it. So I was doing that with um, gloves and a, um, and a mask. And um, I have to report, it works quite well. So this half assembled kit here is glued with this foam glue. And yeah, this is strong enough. I used that today to glue the other pieces in, which is the, um, the back standoffs and the um, and the, uh, these rings for the ducts. And then the most important bit will be to figure out if it actually sticks properly to the, um, to these mylar bottom pads, which unfortunately the silicone really sticks nicely to those. So I'm not sure if I can reuse this pad or if I have to use a fresh one. Yeah, but I really hope that the foam glue, um, sticks to the mylar pad as nicely as the silicone does. I assume so because to the table, it sticks okay. So if it sticks as hard to the table as it, um, or as hard to the mylar pad as it does to the table, I think I'll be happy with foam glue. So yeah, so much about the um, hovercraft kits. As soon as I figured out how to do it properly, I'll I'll make an edited video about this and then post a link to the complete kits, including electronics on my website. For now, if you put in tiny Hoover or hovercraft into the search on my website, you can buy these foam pads for 10 bucks. So, um, yeah, but just quickly touching back on this Hobby King issue. You know, I assume Hobby King just realized that their website isn't selling that good anymore because it just doesn't work properly for a couple of years. People keep complaining and complaining and they don't react to this. So the eBay seller, you know, I went back and 
ch looked into my eBay history, maybe I just bought from Hobby King um, unaware. But now the eBay seller who is selling, has sold me this glue, is called Fashion Fren. Fashion like fashion and then F-R-E-N. The Fashion Fren. Only has um, sold 600 items so far. Um, yeah, it's just a little bizarre. But anyway, glue works good. And um, now I will move on to the next topic. After a little break that I used to um, reassemble myself and open the various chat rooms to see if we're live at all. So first one is Discord. I didn't even log in there yet. So I apologize for the for the silence on air. I know on broadcast you shouldn't do that, but this is my radio station. I can do that. Oh damn, this will take a while to log in here. I should have prepared better, but you know, one of my mantras for this stream is, I'm doing it anyway. There's been lots of attempts of streams before, and I didn't do it because too many things happened. But uh, I've decided to do it anyway. Invalid password. Let me in. Let me in. Doesn't let me in. Oh, it did. It says wrong password and let me in. Into my last pass. So now I can find out what my Discord password is. If you're not using a password manager, you're doing it wrong. You should not be able to memorize your passwords. Only one, only the last pass you should be able to remember. No, Firefox, you don't get to know my passwords. So, PG is in the chat room, and Kayun Flyer says, Hello all, I'm new to the hobby. You've come to the right place, my friend. Me and all the other people who are lurking and sometimes actively barking in the background are here to help you out, because um, that's how we got into the hobby, helped by other nice people who want to spread the love, spread the knowledge. I think this is one of the most important um, movements in this hobby. Well, yes, it has existed in other RC hobbies before as well, but I feel in the custom building multi-copter and especially micro multi-copter hobby, there's um, a special vibe of camaraderie happening. And yeah, part of um, the reason of doing these webcasts is to encourage and foster the camaraderie in the hobby. So yeah, welcome, Kajun, Kajun, Kajun Flyer. Yeah, I'm sorry, um, pronouncing stuff wrong is an ever ongoing theme in this show. Yeah, a lot of fun with that already. And I think we keep, keep that up. So I'm in the Discord chat now. I'm going to YouTube and see if stuff's happening here. YouTube, the video sharing company. I see the Micromotor Workshop is live. That's good. Nine people watching. Um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm sure we could increase the numbers by actually scheduling the events. I might get to that at a later stage, but currently I really don't know when I'm going to start this. It was quite frequently so far, and I'm 
endeavoring to keep it up, but uh, who knows. Oh, lots of chat going on here already. Big Drone Flyer, one of the first commenters on most of my videos. Welcome, Big Drone Flyer 77. Hello, my friend, he says. Mirko Cipolla is here as well from Italy. You know, I'm, I'm glad that I'm doing this so early now, so my old friends from the old world can watch live as well. Welcome, Mirko. Big Drone Flyer is in California. Anders Persson. Where might he come from? From high from Sweden, and he has a jellyfish looking smiley face for us. Hey, Anders, welcome. Sentimental says, Hello, quad father. Much love from Denmark. I love Denmark, as some of you might know. I'm born in Germany. I stayed there for the first 28 years of my life. And I spent almost every summer in Denmark. I love this place. Uhu poor, says Anders. Contact Blue is the way to go with home. I have heard this recommendation um, already a few times. I'll try this out. Thank you, Anders. Maybe it's similar. Maybe it's just the no name version of Uhu poor. But, you know, the advantage of brands is they're consistent, usually, across the world. So if I figure out who poor works good, then I'll pass that on. And um, you don't have to buy from Fashion Friend. Spiny Monk says hi from a very wet UK. Yeah, you know, lots of you folks are over here because it's not wet and not so cold. I mean, it's getting cold, but it's still warm enough for me to um, to brave the cold and not wear shoes. Summer's pretty long this this year. I mean, it starts somewhere in October, and now it's April. Still feels like summer to me. I mean, it's 7.29 in the morning, and it's quite refreshing out here. I'll do a little bit of workout afterwards to keep me warm, but I refuse to wear, to wear shoes yet. Not fast enough, post a smiley. Drone on says hello all. Travis, not fast enough, is Travis. Boohoo, Donny. If you ever go back to Denmark, he means, says sentimental. Let's hoop together. I plan a world tour at some stage and stop in all the countries that I've made friends over the last couple of years and, um, and hoop together with you. But yeah, I have a few other tasks to complete first. Karl Schenk is there as well. So that brings me to the end of the chat room. And uh, how do I get into tube chat, says PG Gooks on the Discord chat. Well, you just go to the live stream, which I assume you're watching because I'm only streaming as far as I know to YouTube today. And um, there's the chat on the side. And as I learned by watching the streams the other days, the recordings of the streams, the chat is played back in real time when you watch it, which is a kind of nice feature. So Drone On says, Benedict, do you go back to EU often? Not so much anymore because I got really sick of flying. I, I had a gold... Um, frequent flyer card from Qantas at some stage, edging on platinum. And I got all these points by flying in the back of the plane. So in the back means, you know, kettle class, as probably most of us do. Company didn't pay for business class. So um, yeah, that's a lot of miles, a lot of miles. And yeah, for the last five years or so, I refused to enter planes. The only flight I did was to once to Melbourne and once to Adelaide. That's about it. So no, I don't go back to Europe often. I have no immediate intentions to leave paradise. When I go to Denmark, though, I will come to Sweden for sure. 
Not sure about the USA though. Currently it's a bit spooky over there. You guys should employ a proper a proper government first. I'm a bit scared. I oh uh, yeah. Let's not talk about this, but currently I'm quite happy with the with the drunken government in Australia. So let's come to the main topic for today. This is the Micromotor Workshop recorded live on Thursday, 12th of April 2018 at 7 a.m. in the morning, Australian Eastern Daylight Saving Time. And today I'm going to talk about 2.4 gigahertz transmitters. I'm going to read the text that I've um, prepared and that some of you might have read already to yeah, make it convenient for those of you to consume the content whilst you don't have time to read. So it goes like this. Hello, my friend. Welcome back to the Micromotor University. One of the most important tools for a great RC experience is your transmitter. If you invest into a good transmitter at the beginning, your piloting skills will improve a lot quicker and you will save money in the long run because you won't have to upgrade later. To control any RC vehicle, you need a radio transmitter to send control commands to the model. If you have more than one model, or if you want to buy your model and transmitter separately, you need to ensure that the radio protocols of your receiver and your transmitter are the same or compatible. If you keep buying RTFs, ready to flies, you end up with a pile of cheap controllers that are all incom incompatible to each other. I learned this the hard way. I have boxes and boxes of transmitters that only work with Oh, smells nice, like oh, old electronics that only control one particular model that I've already crashed to pieces a long time ago. So if you're serious about this hobby, you need one good transmitter and a strategy. The most common frequency for radio control links these days is 2.4 gigahertz. All modern RC protocols on 2.4 gigahertz use some sort of signal spreading system, which lets the signal hop across the available bandwidth and look for free air space automatically and allows the connection to coexist with other RF activity. For example, other pilots on the same 2.4 gigahertz band but also lots of other um, transmitting protocols can exist nicely with this signal spreading technology, which every vendor calls a little different. The three most popular radio protocols for microquads are DSM, FR Sky, and Fly Sky. There are lots of others, but yeah, they have um, kind of niche applications from my perspective. All these three protocols that I just mentioned are basically doing the same thing. They're telling your copter where to fly, but, but they are not compatible to each other. A DSM transmitter will not work with the FR Sky or Fly Sky receiver. So let's look at them um, specifically. DSM, represented by this transmitter here, is a protocol used first and primarily by Spectrum, a US-based company that makes a large range of very good quality and very easy to use transmitters. The main disadvantage of Spectrum radios is the high price. And as some of you might argue, including me, the inflexibility of these radios. For example, this switch is doing one thing, changing one channel, and that's it. If that's controlling channel seven, I cannot make it control channel six. 
but you know this um, inflexibility contributes to the usability if you don't want to muck around with it. Flysky, I don't have any of those here. I never bought one. Makes cheap transmitters, and um, they're better than most stock transmitters that you get in an RTF box. But from what I've heard and read, they lag significantly behind Spectrum and Tyrannus, Spectrum and Tyrannus in terms of hardware quality and features. And then the third on my list, and my personal favorite, is FR Sky, which is a product used by a Chinese company producing the Tyrannus radios. These transmitters run an open source operating system, OpenTX, which was the main trigger for me to become interested in these radios. And it means that even the entry level hardware supports very advanced features and is very configurable. You're not paying for those software features, you're paying just for the hardware. And thanks to an Avid community, the features in a $150 OpenTX radio go way beyond what you can do on the flagship spectrums. But you need to learn a few things and do some complicated stuff yourself, like maybe flashing the radio and then going through the configuration and learn what it does to optimize it for yourself. The good news is you can get spare parts and upgrade parts, for example, whole sensor gimbals and a whole lot of other stuff for these Tyrannus radios. And you get a very active community that if you have any questions, there will be lots of people willing to help you out finding the right solution. So as I said, my personal choice is um, Tyrannus radios. I have quite a few different ones over the time. This is the latest I bought, the cheapest I bought, and currently my favorite. I don't plan to buy any other one soon, even though a few of them have come out afterwards. But yeah, this radio is great. I've replaced the gimbals with hall sensor gimbals and done a lot of configuration to it, and it works just great. I also use um, a Spectrum radio though, so I can support my customers who are using models that I've built or sold parts for. And um, so, yeah, I know what to do and how to set up my flight controllers to make them work with um, Spectrum radios. So that's it for today's lecture on radios. I hope that gives you, I hope that gives you um, a good start if you're new to this hobby. And now I'll I'll have a quick look into the chat room to the chat rooms to collect questions about this. So if you're new to this, if you're watching this live, please come into the YouTube chat room or into the Discord chat, which I've linked up here, and ask some questions. And even if you're not new to this, if you have listened to this and think, I do have a question that other people might have, please raise your virtual hand and ask. So, PG Gook says he's not seeing the chat, the YouTube chat he means on his iPad. So, someone knows how to do this. I think when I've been using this on the iPad, it was visible and quite easily so, just under the, under the um, video, I think. Have a look. Madman is back. Madman1412, one of the long-time inhabitants of this chat. <laughs> Welcome, Adam. Thanks a lot for all your contributions. YouTube chat is rolling. Anders Person says, need to order some more motors from you soon. That would be much appreciated. If you want to support this format here, this channel and all my other efforts, um, I'd welcome you to come to micromotorwarehouse.com and purchase some stuff, some motors, some kits, some flight controllers, or maybe even some shirts or some mugs. I have lots of other stuff that uh, I produce for my and your entertainment. 
So not fast enough is asking, what do you think about the possibility of a 3D whoop? I'm gonna try. I assume with 3D, you mean being able to fly upside down? As you probably know, well, you know, the guy who's asking this not fast enough is um, one of the smarties in our um, community to help us with programming the flight controllers. And I'm absolutely sure you know that if you want to reverse propellers on a micro quad, which is required to fly in a reverse, you need on a brushed quad, you need two heads, two MOSFETs to reverse the polarity. And the only flight controller, oh no, there's two by now, I know which are doing this are from from Blade Horizon Hobby, which is the Nano QX 3D and the Inductrix FPV Plus. If you look on those flight controllers, you see two lines of power, one going in one direction and one going into the other direction. So you can reverse the motors. Those two flight controllers are not programmable. So um, unless you want to use those, I have no idea how you want to make a 3D whoop. And then the additional challenge here is that you need propellers that are designed symmetrically. Otherwise, if you reverse them, the thrust will be so poor that you will probably sail out of the air. Maybe a little, slow, a little slower than just inverting it and piling it into the ground, but not really that much slower, I assume. Anders Persson says it's 23.33 at night, so that was 10 minutes ago. And he also says he rocks the QX7 and now going to save up to the Horus 10 soon. I'm very disappointed with my Horus radio. I recommend before you do this step, just get a set of whole sensor gimbals and mount them into your XQ7 or QX7. I prefer this over the Horus. Hi from France says, do, 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 76. Uh, Adam says, oh crap, video down, call IT. But Pilsner Papa says, video good here still. So Adam, you need to call IT. Um, yeah, already figured this out. Uh, a rubble or rotor sports. That's back. Welcome, Phil. Glad to have you too. And uh, JB is back too. Jelly time. So, yeah, if you don't have any questions or questions on RC transmitters, well, I know of you, I know many of you are um, old school guys in this hobby, so you probably don't have any real questions for me. So yeah, if you don't have any, I'll be soon calling it a day. Just a quick look through here. I still have around five minutes left before the other duties of the day will be starting to call loudly. Can you hear the birds? The birds singing? Micro nerd has joined the chat. <laughs> Insane alien tello. You know what's coming, my friend. That's that's coming when I'm done with the official parts of the Hello. D and construction. <laughs> that, will, that will come for sure. That'll trip up a few people. The the insane tello. It'll come. Best six mil motors for the tiny seven. Yeah, you know. Not want to toot my horn too much, but the six fifteen nineteen thousand kV motors have been unmatched, even though quite a few people tried to figure out the secret sauce.
Hey Ben, is this going to be a standard time you will be broadcasting? I endeavor to do so, yes. So yeah, I'm glad you hear the birds. I think that contributes to the atmosphere. I'm using this microphone here. Sometimes people complain that it's not the best quality, but I cannot afford, I wish I could, a Sennheiser Lapalier microphone system. It's around thousand bucks. So if you wanna, if you think the audio quality is crap and you wanna contribute to better audio quality, if you guys buy a thousand shirts, then I'll buy a Sennheiser Lapalier microphone system and quality might improve, audio quality might improve big time. But this is the, um, the microphone, a Plantronics W720 that I'm using to record all the audio for my videos for years, just because it's so convenient. Nick Burns is back and he says, do any of the goggles today come well to your Sennheisers? those ski goggles you use. They're not Sennheisers, even though, yeah, the quality is up there with those. They are Cinemizers. Cinemizer OLED goggles. No, nothing compares to them yet. They have been off the market for a year or two, so that's why I didn't talk about much, about them much, but they are back. The big drawback on these things is the price. I ordered them over some eBay seller in Korea, which um, gave me a little cheaper price, but they still were like $600, I believe. And then I hacked them apart and put them into a, a ski mask, which cost me another $100 or so. So that was a quite nerve wracking experience to buy and then disassemble and reassemble this thing but nothing matches the quality of the Cinemizer OLED goggles. The clarity, the contrast, the sharpness. After using my fact shards and putting these on, I feel like I'm sitting in the first row of FPV. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't really talk about much, about them much because the price tag hurts. And this person has done a two millimeter upgrade for the batteries. What is that? Ah, yeah, that's for the, for the whoops. Yeah, everyone who's flying a whoop or any micro quad or helicopter or micro plane from Blade, which has the tiny plugs, 1.25 millimeter pin spacing. Get rid of that rubbish. Horizon Hobby doesn't listen to us. Those connectors are crap. They're not made to transport currents more than 500 milliamps. You gotta use the larger two millimeter plugs. Doesn't seem like much of a difference, but it is big. Yeah, Nick, I'm using um, uh, Fat Shark goggles and these cinemizers. Fat Shark because they're more convenient. They sit nicer on the head. The form is better, the fitment is better, and they do have a fan. Oftentimes it's so humid in here that um, the cinemizers are fogging up quickly. But if I'm down for a long session, then I make sure this thing is charged. It only has an internal battery. And then I keep it on my forehead for a little bit to warm it up. And then it's the best X FPV experience I ever had. And I had many of them. So, uh, there's some chat between uh, Rubble and Madman. Sabin Churchill is asking, what FR Sky Hall sensor? M7 normal or M7R? So, um, yeah, the hall sensors are not um, related to the protocol, but they need to be compatible to your radio. So check in the description if you buy gimbals, if they are matching to this particular radio. These are the regular M7 gimbals I think they're exactly the same 
that go into the um, into the 9XD, but I'm not sure. These are hall sensor gimbals for the um, X7. That's what it said on the description when I bought them. And um, yeah, they fit in without any modifications. They're not the racing version, so they are with full stick um, movements. I never had the R version. I heard lots of people um, prefer that. I'm totally fine with the regular version. <laughs> the motors scream in pain after you've put proper power onto them. That's, that's what it needs to be. Um, Adam says, this is a good deal to help educate and discuss stuff. I missed it when the weekly cast went away. I missed that too. This was, um, I was always looking forward to that, but I also dreaded it because it was a lot of work. So I'm currently streamlining my daily routine to fit this in here every day, ideally at the same time of the day. So thanks a lot, everyone who's been watching and contributing here. Um, I hope you learned something today and I see you next time.